First of all, you don't know me. <laughs> We're all about that high school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl, drama girl, cheering for the right team. Drama queens, drama queens, drama queens. smart girl, rough girl, fashion but you're tough girl, you could sit with us girl. Drama queens, drama queens, drama queens, drama, drama queens, drama queens. Friends, loves. Wilmington crew, we are back with Jana Kramer. Um, we basically did the Thursday therapy wind down <laughs> version in our Q and A. You all sent in amazing questions for her, and sorry, we just really talked about life. And I'm not sorry because I'm sure you're deeply inspired. But today, we are back to talk about the actual episode, and Jana is here for seven oh six. Let's. Dig in. Jenna, will you read the synopsis for sure. this crap? <laughs> so Haley considers taking matters into her own hands as Nathan's scandal threatens his endorsement deals. Julian gives Alex another chance and Brooke reconnects with Chase. Millicent questions whether she has what it takes to be a model while Clay lets Quinn in on a big secret. Director Janice Cook, writer Mike Daniels. We love it. And this episode is called Deep Ocean Vast Sea, which tracks, honestly, because there is yeah. a lot of... Ocean. beach time happening here. Yeah. It was really beautiful. It made me miss Wrightsville. Right? Yes. I I was saying on one of our previous episodes how much fun I've been having watching the Brooke, Alex, Millie dynamic. And mm. I'm like, I want this. I want a movie. I want us to have a show. Like, I want Girl, this buddy comedy. do it. Don't you think? Uh, don't twist my arm. <laughs> okay, great. Can you tell the fans before we jump into the episode... How how did season seven come about for you? Like, where did the casting call come from? Give us a little bit of background on your audition process. You told us a little bit in our Q&A, but I want to know more. Okay, so yeah, I, I auditioned for Chantel's character, Quinn. And then when I was, uh, I got the callback for Quinn. And when I was in the callback, the producers and creator said, hey, I think you're more fit for this character named Alex. She's just a guest star recurring role, which, you know, I was like, oh, man, I really wanted to be a series regular. I was pumped about that. But at the same time, you know, they don't see me for this character. So let's let's try. Um, let's just give it a shot. Uh, even though, again, I didn't feel super connected to Alex at the time. Uh, I was like, I got one shot and I got to go back in there and, and you know, do the audition. And so, uh, went in there and, you know, those rooms I miss, I miss going in the room. I'm, I'm not great as an auditioner over tape. I just, I love to be able to kind of like chat with the producers and like be in the room and like yeah. uh, be able to change things up. Like I, I remember the feedback, you know, that I was getting from some of the producers they were like, all right, why don't you do it this way? Which again, I would not have never have had the chance to do now when we do like these self tapes, that just yeah. seems so ugh, to me, but um, I really just got to like play in the room and I had fun and and through auditioning for her, um, it was the next day, I think it was that I got the call from my agent saying, okay, um, you know, you got the, you got the part and there's a potential that you'll become a series regular. So just kind of, you know, do your thing, play your cards right. And uh and yeah, and and you're off to Wilmington. And it was just kind of like my head was spinning. Um, and then it was like, all right, I'm going to start watching episodes. And, you know, it was just, I was like, I just need to go balls to the wall with this character. Yeah. Well, and my God, you did. I mean, we were all gagged at the first scene. <laughs> like when Alex arrives and comes through the throng of people at the airport and Millie comes to pick her up and has done all of her research and you slam the door of the limo and you're like, I could eat the butt off a skunk right now. Uh -huh. We like spit takes all around. You just are the most fun person to watch. And the way you were able to kind of flip this idea that someone could perform in public and then be like completely wild in private. <laughs> it's, it's like the most enjoyable thing, but unlike, you know, a Dan Scott or, or even versions of like Rachel, it's, it's not a character. Like I'm not looking at Alex as a villain. I love her and I love that she drives me crazy. Well, that's what's so fun is like now looking back when I was watching the episodes is like the dynamic between you and I, like, I'm just like, I really wasn't meaning to hurt you. I was like, oh my God, no, like we just have a working relationship. Like he's got like, <laughs> no, it's like, she just really doesn't think anything she does is wrong. And mm -hmm. that's what was like so funny about it too, you know? Cause I'm like, 
she just sees nothing that she's doing is wrong. Like she's just like genuinely like, oh no, he doesn't want me. Like I got totally stripped naked and like he wants nothing to do with me. Like he loves you, you know? Yeah, but like, like a guy has never done that before. <laughs> like normally like they would. So I'm just like, wow, she's just really in her own world. It, well, it's such a boldness. It's like, would I want to behave in that manner? No. Do I respect the boldness of someone who can with no shame? Like, yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. I'm, I'm wildly impressed by that level of self-confidence. Yeah. And that's where I was like, I remember talking to the creator. I was like, all right, can I, can I just give her like an, I have, I have to find the heart with her. And so that's, mm -hmm. you know, later episodes when I, that's when I really connected with her. I was like, you know, when she was said yeah. that one scene, like I hate myself when I'm alone. And I always go back to that because mm -hmm. that was the moment where her and I like connected and I yeah. like really became a thread through her because that's how I've always felt. So it was yeah. like a very, and then I was like, okay, now I can embody a little bit more of my personality into her and while still like having her be the core. I love that. That was very much the journey I had with Brooke. Like I couldn't relate to her at all. Mm -hmm. And then there were things that, that I really was able to see how her particularities and mine could merge. It was, it was in season four when we did that, that scene that people always put up like at the conventions with the projection of like, mm -hmm. not enough, not pretty enough, not smart enough. Like that phrase for Alex was true for you. And mm -hmm. that feeling of not enoughness had always been so true for me. Like, why does nothing ever seem to matter? You're just going to say this or do this or, run with that or like what about the person in here mm -hmm. and I like that we got to sort of parallel path these women in that way that's very cool to me same do you remember your first day on set or is it a blur I do remember it um it was it it wasn't with you I remember the first day was the uh the movie time period piece where they yeah. put my hair up in the whole thing. Like that was, that was my first day. And that was so fun. Uh, Cause I've always wanted to be in a period piece. So oh I'm my like, God, me too. And I've never gotten to do it. Same. It's my dream. <gasps> like I want to be pride and prejudice, Mr. Darcy, oh. like the whole thing. Like it's yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. it's my dream. And so that was like, well, like, like I kind of got to do it for like two seconds on one tree hill. So uh, that was my first day. And then I remember the second day was the, the airport stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, Again, like, I think it was hard coming into a show where it had been filmed so many seasons. I feel like, you know, you, like, obviously I was m most nervous to do my scenes because they were all with you and like, you know, being who you were and it was just, but you were of the cast, just very lovely and welcoming. And that does mm. not, you know, that does not go overlooked, especially going on to shows after that, realizing, you know, not many do that. So- that was appreciated. Oh you sweet angel. I mean, I just adored you immediately. Like, and I love, I love that. I mean, I think we talked about this in the last episode. Like when you really click with people, your friendship becomes timeless. And I've always really felt that about you. And like, I don't know, the journey that we got to go on as characters was so fun, mm -hmm. but it paled in comparison to like, our days driving on the beach in your <laughs> drop top Jeep. We drove to Raleigh to go get the Jeep. You mean yes. Austin. <laughs> and like, do you remember when the new sound system got installed under the, uh, in the bar that we lived over? And like oh my God. one night it was like 2 AM, you guys, for everyone at home, Jana and I lived in this apartment together over a bar <laughs> and, and they Austin. put, yes. And they put new speakers in and literally one night it was like, I woke up thinking it was an earthquake because I grew up in California. Like frames were vibrating off the walls. Like it was so crazy. And we were just like, this is probably not like what people think of like quote unquote TV stars, but we had this insanely <laughs> cheap apartment and we loved it. Yeah. And then everything went to sh Yeah, that was wild. But also, <laughs> you know, it was just, it was, I actually wrote about this in my book too, because being on that show I, I, I mean, I never, I didn't come from money. I came from a single mom and, you know, always negative in the bank account. And anytime I'd like, you know, I'd be waitressing in Los Angeles and then I would book something, have to obviously quit my job, but it was like, then I, right, then I'd go back to negative in the account again. And so when yep. I got One Tree Hill, I talked about this in the next chapter where it was like, it was my, we, we went shopping to that really cute store we'd always go to. I can't remember the Oliver. street. Was it Oliver? 
Okay. And you, I saw this, um, it was like this ring and it was like this uh, bird with like a cage over it. And you're like, you, you should get it. Like, it's so great. And I just started getting, you know, decent checks, you know, that yeah. I've never seen in my lifetime. And so I was just like, oh, but Sophia, it's $300. And she's like, girl, you're a serious regular now. Like, you know, you need <laughs> to get it. And I was just like, okay. But I remember just being so sick about $300 ring yeah. that I got myself. But like, you you definitely opened me up to like, oh, you know, the you were, you know, you kind of helped me baby step into to things and like that world. And it was just, you know, but also you were so generous too with everything. And, you know, my favorite part was because I still was, I'm always a poor girl at heart. Like even today, I'm just like, I'm, I never know when it's going to not have any. So but we would be in your in your room and I'd be like, what don't you want to wear again? So I can take it. <laughs> like if you would just give me your like, your, your scraps. I remember that day when you were looking at that and thinking like, I don't know, I'm a very sentimental ceremonial person. Mm -hmm. And if there's something to celebrate, like, you know, don't be insane, obviously, and put yourself at risk, but I think you right. deserve to celebrate it. And I just remember being like, babe, like you are a fucking series regular now, like get yourself something that you will. It doesn't matter if in 10 years you don't want to wear it anymore. Like you'll keep it forever and you'll yeah. remember that. And I think there's an energy in it. Like when people ask me why I have a hard time getting rid of mementos and things, because for me, it's like, I want to hold on to that good energy. I want to hold on to that good memory and I don't know, I, yeah, I, I do remember that day. And I remember just being so excited for you because it's like, you deserve to be proud of yourself. Mm. Mm. That's a therapy thing we always talk about. Right, right. <laughs> that's oh my that's God. a baby stepper. I know my therapist will always be like the word, no one deserves, deserve is not. And I'm like, listen, I've reframed deserve and I like it. We deserve this. Like, mm -hmm. I remember talking to the girls about that when we started this podcast. It was like, we deserve to figure out why we made a magic thing like and mm -hmm. we deserve to own it we made it right. like our boss was obviously part of it but like he doesn't own this we own this we made this god damn it mm -hmm. well and you again you get to change the script so yeah it feels good yeah. yeah well and what a cool reference for the episode because that's essentially what nathan and Haley are trying to do this whole time mm -hmm. and it's not lost on me that everyone's figuring out you know what stories to share and and who they're going to be and if they can really pass a test, like Alex finding more of herself and being respected for her ideas and her intellect with Julian, mm -hmm. Nathan having to look at Haley and say, if you know me, if you actually have faith in me, if you know the man I am, you know, I didn't do this. That chilled me, <gasps> by the way, given like back scene, then right? when I read that script, it didn't, it meant nothing to me. It didn't, I didn't mm -hmm. feel anything, but like given everything that I, I've gone through with trust stuff, I'm like, that scene was so powerful to me now that I was just mm -hmm. like, I was in it because I'm like, yeah, if this is like, if Alan said that to me, I'd be like, no, I, tr I trust you wholeheartedly. I, I couldn't have trusted maybe someone in my past, but like yeah. for him to say that, it's like, and what a disappointment for also for him that he has to, it's like, I felt, I felt for, for uh, Joy's character because, you know, obviously it's like, well, you know, this is, this is happening. And like, this girl is saying that, you know, this is her son and, you know, his son or whatever. So like, that is, that's a slap in the face and it's hard not to trust the women, right. Or what she's saying, but also like for Nathan, I'm like, I really felt for him too. Cause it's like, what a slap in the face to not be trusted by your wife. Like, who do you think I am? And who do you, mm -hmm. like, I'm not my father. I'm not gonna, like, I wouldn't abandon a child. So not only do you think I've abandoned you, but I've abandoned a child. And I was like, Oh, Oh, it's heavy. Yeah. Like what it was, I thought that was, that certainly I think is my honorable mention for the whole episode. It was such a powerful scene. And I got to be honest, like I wrote down, wait, where is it? Wait, before you say that though, I just have to say the only thing, cause now like in therapy, cause I've been through this, I just wish Nathan would have said like something to the effect of like, B but, and I am sorry that this is affecting you and this is hurting you and that this has mm -hmm. come up and what's brought up for you. Like he never yes. actually, he never had empathy in my eyes for her. And I am only, I'm saying this as a 40 year old who's gone through that, but like, mm -hmm. but there should be empathy that this is even something that is, has come up. Like I didn't really see any like remorse on that side for her feelings. Well, what drove me crazy and I wrote down, I go, how dare he, he walks away in all caps in my notes when she says her number's all over your cell phone bill. Yeah. I was like, 
excuse me, you're going to walk away. You're caught. But what I thought was interesting, because I was like, this feels really gaslighty. He's saying he only lied about his wife trusting him. Like, no, he's lied about something. Right. And what would have been, I like think, you did call better. Her. <laughs> well, so. <laughs> what would have been so much better would have been like, did you really look at it? Imagine if he'd walked into the office and been like, these are all incoming calls, Haley. Yeah. And then you could have been like, oh, uh-huh. now I get it. Instead, he was like, I can't believe you don't trust me. And it's like, well, clearly this is why. Well, show me that I can. Right. Yeah. To your point, I thought they really redeemed it. And I did love that it spoke to this larger thing, right? Of like, mm-hmm. well, you will believe what is often reported. You start to believe what's in the world around you. We see sure. it now with social media and these algorithms. And like, you know, mm-hmm. he's like, this is being said about me and it isn't true. And I thought you would know, but I hated, I I noted here, I was like, okay, it, it, it comes back around and I really like where they end up. But it's so clear to me that like a dishonest man had his hand on that scene. Right. Because I I actually think a guy like Nathan would have been like, come look at it with me and realize these are incoming calls. Do you know how many people call me? Do you know how often yeah. this happens to me? And you could go, oh, there's more to the story. Okay. Right. Like, and he did say like, I'm a professional athlete. People get my number, but that's yeah. still a very gaslighting comment as opposed to like leaning in yeah. to have the comment. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and and I think it speaks to that larger issue, right? Of what we were talking about in the other episode. like. When the pile-on happens, sometimes you just snap. And like, Haley hit this woman. She snapped. She's clearly having a hard time. She's putting on a brave face. But how is this not supposed to rattle her? And I wish that the front half of the scene had felt more like the second half. When he was really clear about, if you don't trust me, this is a bigger issue. I was like, ooh, we, now we're getting into the good stuff and right. this is what I want more of. And I love you and I'm sorry that this has come up for you. This is like making you yeah. feel this way. That's all I want, just lean in. Just I just want yeah. people to lean in. Understand that for her, this is really, really difficult. Right. Oh, and then you have the flip side of this amazing <sighs> comedy with you. <laughs> when Millie wakes up in your bed and you're working and you've texted Melvin. Love. That was one of my, that was one of my favorite scenes. Cause I'm like, no, 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 nothing. Like I just like yeah. rock out with your, rock out, rock out with <laughs> like, your, <laughs> and the way Lisa almost says it and gasps, you two are so funny together. You're both such amazing comedians. I, like I said, I just want, I want more, 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 more of it. Listen, girl, you have way more pull than I ever have pull. So anytime you want to brook an Alex show, then like, honestly, I'm so down. It's actually been so interesting because this, this is the first year of my life that I haven't been contracted to a show. And so like, I've been able to travel a little more. I've been able to do more of this, like more podcasting and, Mm -hmm. and, and this sort of work I've, you know, I went and I made a movie I love. I'm about to make another movie, but when you were talking before about missing that onset camaraderie, I'm like, yeah, I miss that. Yeah. Like I talked to my girlfriend, Sky, that I did Good Sam with about the same thing. Which by the way, was a great show and it deserved it was really more airtime. Well, it was given a terrible time slot and it, everything about when it was put on was terrible. But I got my friendship with her out of the deal and she mm-hmm. met her now husband out of it. Like we, we just had the most wonderful Love. set. But like, because we had signed on to that show in early 2020 and then it was a three-year process to even get through the first season with the pandemic like it was this long journey and yeah I don't know I I this is my first year not on a tv set and I miss it too so I I'm ready for the Brooke and Alex and Millie show again I'm here let's let's do it like we can (laughs) we know the right peeps okay great um can I Ask if you noticed something about this episode, which I am unwell about. Which piece? Okay. The contrast of, and like the wonder of watching the Clay and Quinn relationship start. And Hillary pointed out the smartest thing when we were bringing Rob in that like Clay, Rob and Hillary are the same. And like Clay was essentially brought in to be Peyton ish. And, and you get, Quinn coming in, she's the like 
broody, beautiful artists like mm-hmm. Lucas. Um. And so much of their energy is so great. And then suddenly in this episode, Chantel is like out on the beach with her camera. She looks like a hot mermaid. Oh, like she's her stunning. hair is kind of red. Yeah. She's like in full aerial mode in her bathing suit, like appropriate for the beach. Right. And Clay is walking the beach in a suit, sans jacket, <laughs> and suede loafers. And they have multiple scenes together. And she's in a bathing suit. And he, <laughs> he keeps his loafers on <laughs> in the sand, even when they're sitting down. I did not notice that. I That's <gasps> that's an eye that, that's a good director eye right there. Did not notice that. I am not okay. I was like, why, why is he wearing this outfit? Why is he wearing his shoes? Why does he never take his shoes off? I feel like that's something that I now, like when I was shooting the last movie with Austin, I'm like, I would never wear this to therapy. I'm not wearing this short little sundress to therapy. Like we have to change the wardrobe for this. So there's many times now that like I've taken, cause it's like, but like back in the day, I would have never, I would have never thought that. Like y'all, I was, I was just like, what is going on? And they're having the their chemistry's building and they're having these sweet conversations and he's just got his suede loafers on in the sand. (laughs) I'm not, like, I'm not good. That's amazing. But I really enjoy, I really enjoy their dynamic. And I liked finally getting to see, because we've seen in the episodes building up to this, you see the reveal that they're not actually sleeping together, that they're just leaning on each other you know Clay has something building. And now, you know, the blonde, no spoilers, has showed up. And mm-hmm. and there's something going on here. We know about Quinn and David, obviously. We don't know about Clay and this woman yet, but we know he's got a pain point. And you've seen them build this friendship and talk about the fact that they're not screwing around. Right. And then when Quinn goes at Nathan... And calls him on it in this episode. I was like, yes, girl. He has absolutely no right to judge you. I love this. Yes, 1,000. And I love how Nathan then came and apologized and and said what he said too to Quinn. But also like I love watching um, Rob and Chantel's scenes together because I also, you know, they were such good friends off camera too. And so it was just like how how their storyline progresses is I just, I always loved I just, I don't know, just like there's like, there's truth into it. And it's like, mm-hmm. I think it's just a beautiful relationship on and off yeah. screen. Yeah. It's nice all these years past doing it mm-hmm. to have the ability to watch it and go, oh, I can see the seeds of that. Like, yeah, I can see you, me, and Lisa having so much fun together because we did. Yeah. I can see the easy friendship budding between Rob and Chantel because it did. Yeah. And it, it's it's special when those things translate because they add just like a layer of something that's bigger mm-hmm. than what's on the page. Yeah, and they're both, you know, great actors too. But there's what I like about both of them is there's that mystery, like you kind of said. And there's a it, that's that's what's intriguing to go, oh wait, well, who's the blonde again? And so I'm like, all right, so I'm I'm you know, that kind yeah. again is like that I know now because it's a refreshment memory, obviously, but like that there's both of them bring a, a kind of a, a beautiful mystery thread through the through the story. Yeah. Yeah. And I just enjoy all of the scenes. You know, I know we talked about it earlier, but I really want to focus on it for a bit. You and Austin are so good together. And even you freaking out in the house, walking around behind him when he's reading the script and you're like, it's supposed to be funny. You're not laughing. And he never looks up and goes, maybe I'm laughing on the inside. Yeah. I, I just love, I love the dynamic. I love the relationship. It's a date. It's work. It's a date. It's a working date. Work, like, date-ish. Date-ish. Ish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. But also I think that was the friendship too. Like we were all roommates and it was roomies. Yeah. And like, that's why I think like Austin and I worked so well together this past, you know, spring, summer. It was because it's like, there's that, that friendship, that connection there. That's just like, and even so, like even on set when I was with them a couple months ago, I'm like, was that okay? Like, like I don't know. Like, it's just like, you know, be able to yeah. like work, play off of each other. It's just, it was, it was fun. It was like, he's one of my all time favorite scene partners. So, and through that. that, like Alex Julian, it's like, he, he let me have some fun. And also he helped me along the way too. in a lot of scenes, you know, moving forward in the episodes. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much. Is it, do you have sense memory when you watch certain scenes? Like sometimes when we pan across the river, I'm like, oh my God, I can smell Wilmington when I watch this. 
Or, oh, I remember being in that set because we we broke in the middle of that scene and I remember getting in so much trouble because we couldn't stop laughing. Like, yeah. are there things watching these episodes that, that come up for you like that? Yeah, the where we shot my hotel room scenes was in the uh was in the what's that called? The um oh my gosh, why am I blanking? It was on one of the stages, right? It was on the yeah, on the stage. Yeah, they yeah. built it. So they built it on the stage and you know, our trailers just were outside there and you know, it just brought back all the memories of I mean, from catering to the offices were right there. And then, but to us like yeah. hanging out, you know, in our, our chairs outside, just outside that door was just the open <laughs> yeah. stage, you know, like there wasn't much else there. Um, and so, you know, just the times that were had when they yelled cut, check the gate at the time. So like that was that those memories were, were awesome. And just, you know, yeah, I mean, there was so many times too, where we would just have to cut cause we're laughing, you know, and like, that's just the, the joy of the, the fun had on set was, was that, but I think, yeah, my favorite memories was, was working on my, in my stage, the hotel. Yeah. It's interesting too, to begin to see the dynamic shift. The, the buddy comedy of Alex and Millie is so fun. She's great. I didn't oh like, I, I, I knew Lisa was a great actress, obviously, but like, like kind of like you had said, I, I, I was listening to um, a previous episode and you were saying, you know, it's, or no, maybe it was Rob, like, you know, you like acting with, you don't get to like watch, or maybe you know, it was on your voice note, but yeah. like, you don't, you don't get to like actually watch. And so now watching, I'm like, Lisa is so like, she had me cracking up. Like, I'm like, she's so funny. She's incredible. Like yeah. I would have loved to see Lisa on SNL. 1000. Well, is she still, like, what is she doing still? Like I haven't, I've lost touch with her. So I'm like, is she still acting? Like uh, we, we, uh, we all keep trying to find her. Really? I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I like, I tried to hunt down Brendan. Like she's not at a conventions. Like I never, I like, I don't know where, I don't know where she's at. None of us do. Send a signal, I, girl. We miss her, girl. Smoke <laughs> signals. Send We're send coming for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Could you imagine you and you and me like Tweedledum and Tweedledee at the front door? Like, hey, girl, we found you. Finding Lisa. There's our show. Like. Oh my god! Honestly, I'm so ready for it. But like, there's something so precious. You guys are so funny and so sweet. And and because, as you said, Alex doesn't. There's not like a mean bone in her body. She thinks everything she's doing and saying is okay. Yeah. The the cringe I felt, I mean, especially the time period, my God. Calling Lisa Goldstein plus size is like. Oh, I know. Uh, I'm like, no wonder we all had such insane like body confidence issues. Also like more power to him. Is anyone on earth hotter than Ashley Graham? No, but. Right. The, the time was so hard on women. Mm -hmm. And so toxic for us. And yet this toxicity was coming through Alex as this like incredibly sweet person who didn't, you didn't say it in a mean way. You didn't mean it in a mean way, but you start to see how, depending yeah. on the way someone feels, someone else's words affect them. Mm -hmm. And the beginning of this storyline, like, I don't know. It just, it's really, hard. It's a hard one to watch. Yeah. yeah. Cause you know, well, we know how it ends up with, you know, with her and, and how like, you know, the road that she takes and that yeah. self doubt, like she didn't think that she had any body issues until I said something different to her. Mm -hmm. So then now she's believing, you know, that's, that now becomes her, her truth when it's not her truth. It's the world telling her something as opposed exactly. to herself. And that's sad. It's so sad. And that's where I'm always like, even like as a parent too, I'm like, the world is going to tell you so many mistruths, which is why I'm constantly like, you are good enough. You are brave. You are strong. You're beautiful. It's like, cause everyone else is going to tell you everything that's not true. So like, exactly. let me be the one to tell. So I'm like, oh, that, that, that like hurt watching as like an adult. <laughs> no, it hurt me too. And it's like, it's what you were saying earlier that Alan always says, right? What's in our four walls. Mm -hmm. Like for you to be able to teach your kids that what's in your four walls is what's true. Yeah. It's so important because the world's going to be terrible to them. I mean, mm -hmm. what we did to Millie, by the way, Ash and Sammy watched with me yesterday and Ash goes, diet pills? Why? And I said, well, because when you went in the other room, you missed the point. Like they were saying. Wait, so Ashley knows who I am? <laughs> she sure does. Oh my God. And, and she, and I go, you know, essentially what they're saying and like, obviously it's ridiculous, but like 
this character is telling this character, like, oh, I'm the model and you're the plus size model. And she goes, no, like screamed at the top of her lungs. And I was like, well, welcome to Tree Hill. This is why everyone had a complex. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Oy, oy, oy. But yeah. I appreciate that, that this thing that is so hard, like that makes us all cringe is not delivered with malice mm -hmm. on your part. Like it was such a good choice for you to continue that um, stream of consciousness that, that right. had no malintent because mm -hmm. you begin to see the way people are affected rather than necessarily the way people are like bullied. And I, right. I like that it wasn't bullying, that it was... That it was I wasn't more intentionally being personal bullying. fear. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And like inside too, like I'm taking these diet pills because I'm told that I need to be skinny. And right. Yeah. Well, and you see how this toxic system just is hurting everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I like that we also got the behind the scenes with her in that beautiful scene with Mouth where she just starts to cry. Yeah. I, and I wrote it down. I said, the fact that Millie's crying about her body is so fucking sad to me. They did this to all of us. Like mm -hmm. that's in my notes. But that thing, when she says it made me feel special. Well, but also though, I would just want to say this too, is like, they did that to us, but also even in the show, like I remember one of the scenes moving forward where I have to be in like lingerie. Mm. It was, I, I didn't have like the flattest stomach. And so there were some words said that made me feel like, oh, we need a higher waisted because this isn't going to look good on camera. And so then my head goes, oh, because I have a stomach. Yeah, I know. Like, I know. And so, like, you know, we're also told in our yeah. workplaces too. Yeah. Well, yeah, mm. that's the thing is it's relentless. And no matter what you are, you're not the right thing. Yeah. Like, oh, you're, you're pale. You should be tan. You're tan. Why, why are you getting sun damage? You're like, right. <laughs> whatever it is, it's terrible. Do we remember my sun damage, by the way? We can't, <laughs> this is a way later episode, but do you remember Puerto Rico? What? Sophia. Wait. My remember, I got burned in my entire face. Oh, your face. sunburn! <gasps> yeah, remember the sunburn and like the the it peeled off of my face. Oh my god! Yeah, terrible. Yeah, that was the worst. Yeah, I just think that like the way we were treated on camera and off was so crazy. But the thing that I thought was so beautiful that I felt like they gave to Millie, but was so true for the rest of us, was like I have felt competent and smart and capable and reliable, but never special. Mm. And I feel like women feeling special in that era, the people in power always perceived as dangerous. Mm -hmm. And I love that now, whether it's the way body positivity has changed or like even, you know, you see Simone and Jordan like bowing down that to the Brazilian brilliant. gymnast. Like yeah. all the girlies, we're all here together in a new way. And I'm, mm. I don't know, I love it. And I love, yeah. I love that we get to sort of be here in that era for each other too. Agreed. And yeah. that mouth was there for Millie in that moment and put her little shoe on like a Cinderella moment. Right. Well, and that mouth was not only there for Millie, but that were how he showed up for Nathan too, because mm. he, it's really easy to be able to jump on the wagon of what media is talking about and, you know, that being his friend. And so mm -hmm. It's easy in this, these day and age to be like, yeah, well, sources say, or, you know, because we're close yeah. to certain people that, you know, we know or whatever. But in this situation where can sports, like, can this show just be about sports? And does, why does it have to be like, mm -hmm. just, you know, um, talking about things that we have no idea mm -hmm. or having well, an opinion about something we don't know? You know, yeah. so. And when you see the way that running with a lie will legitimize it, like you mm -hmm. saw it with the boxer from Algeria. That poor mm. woman, like everybody just ran with this nonsense about her during the Olympics. And it, it was really interesting watching this episode this week because it felt so timely to have Mouth say, we're not going to do that. We're mm -hmm. not going to legitimize a falsehood by reporting on it for clicks, for ratings. Come on. And you kind of wish, <laughs> kind of wish the media would do a little more of that, don't you? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm always like, which well, is, what is the truth? That's why I'm like, cause I've even come to you on certain things and be like, this is what I'm, this is what I hear and what I've been, you know, told mm -hmm. what it, what is like, I just want to know what the actual facts are. Like, what are the facts? Like yeah. from like 
it, but there's a fact from, there's facts from two different sides. I just want to know the, the one fact. <laughs> yeah. What's the actual fact, not the alternative fact. Yeah. Like what is just actually the fact? And that's where I'm yeah. like, that's where I feel like it's hard to live in this day and age because there are facts from both, from so many places. And I just mm-hmm. would like to know the one. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then it gets really juicy, right? Because Dan, you start to realize what what's his angle here? You know, and and the fact that Rachel has to come in to try to convince Renee, it it's so well done. Because I mm-hmm. remember, again, not trying to spoil it for any first time viewers, but I remember where this goes. Mm-hmm. And and they were so good at weaving these possibilities. Dan saying, you know, I want him to be better than I was. I don't want it to take him 16 years to claim his his other child. I did exactly this. He's my son. Mm-hmm. And then Rachel sitting down and being like, give me a break. Nathan blew him off and he's here right. to bury him and help you. And you're just like, what is happening? Right. Who's telling the truth? I mean, that's I, this is why I get why the show works. It's juicy. And I'm like, yeah. I want to go back now, now that I've watched a few. I'm like, okay, what happens again? Like, <laughs> it's exciting. Okay, well, good. Keep watching. And then you can bop in here and what hang with to? us more and more. I would love um, that. Selfishly, I'm so glad that I got you all to myself this week. And I know Rob and Joy are both up. so bummed to not be here. So you'll have to come back and get to hang. Yeah, I would love to. I would, would love to when uh, when when you guys want me back. It's always fun to, to rewatch it and, and well, drag Alan to watch it with me. I can't wait. I do have, we got this question perhaps more than any other question okay. um, when we told the fans that you were coming. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants to know what you think Alex Dupre is up to now. Oh my goodness. I love that question. And that is why I want to do a show. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's still trying to find her way, but like in the best way possible. Like, I don't think she's lost, but I think she's just kind of like on her eat, pray, love right now, figuring mm-hmm. it out. And I know that she's going to have like, the happy, but I think she's still like, she's kind of still figuring it out. I don't think she's a mom yet. Okay. That's Do what you I think. think, is Alex like, like Jana in real life? Is she a multi-hyphenate? Is she also making music? Is she, okay. Yes. She's doing all the things. She's doing music. She's doing movies. She's going through men. She's, you know, she's, she's doing, she's doing it all. I love it. But she's going to slow down soon. But first she has to have a show about all the things. Well, yeah, we need to see her have some wild times, I think. Yeah. Uh-huh. That feels fun. But she's had, she's not into like, she's not in the gutter. She's not, she's still sober. She's still doing uh, lime, like, you know, the lime uh, shots <laughs> with water, you know, and just the, you know, she's still trying, trying to tie cherry ties. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's her thing. Yeah. She's she so a, lively. Yeah. She's still fun, but she's, she's responsible. Yeah. Ish. Ish. Date ish. <laughs> Date ish. <yeah. laughs> Always an ish with her. What an absolute delight you are. Thank you so much for coming. Friends, we will see you next week for season seven, episode seven. I and love and you. All right, girl, you're the best. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a review. You can also follow us on Instagram at dramaqueensoth. Or email us at dramaqueens at iheartradio.com. See you next time. We're all about that high school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl, drama girl, cheering for the right team. Drama queens, drama queens, smart girl, rough girl, fashion but you're tough girl, you could sit with us girl. Drama queens, drama queens, drama queens, drama, drama queens, drama queens.